difference a day makes. A high of 70 degrees here in the Carolinas, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina today. And this was yesterday. It was snowing outside of our control center here in Charlotte. And you watched it live on the live streams of the Carolina Weather Group. So many of you did because... What just a bizarre day it was. Now, again, we talked about this yesterday morning on a special live stream we did. Snow in April is not unheard of, but it's not frequent. So it was a nice rare event. Here's a look at some of the uh, snow totals we got from across the region. Most people, if you even saw any snow, and by the way, in order to see the snow, you really kind of had to be along that I-85 corridor, uh, saw a coating. A coating that was gone by lunchtime, but we had this very localized situation playing out in Union County, North Carolina, near Monroe, where they had almost two inches of this stuff fall yesterday on April the 2nd. And we even had reports of sleet going all the way up to uh, Greensboro and uh, towards the Triangle. Meanwhile, out on the coast, it was a whole different ball game. The same storm system that was bringing winter weather to the I-85 corridor was bringing tropical storm force wind conditions to the Outer Banks. Reports of wind gusts up to 60, maybe 70 miles an hour. This one coming from a weather flow station on uh, Avon Pier recorded a wind gust of 61 knots or about 70 miles an hour and if i'm not mistaken although it's not on this graphic here i believe they also had some beach erosion some localized coastal flooding because we had such a strong system off the coast yesterday that if you were out over the water in a boat in a cruise ship you actually would have been in a hurricane force wind warning that's how much uh, pressure gradient and uh, wind we had going on with this storm is absolutely incredible all right shifting gears take a look at this video that came in over the weekend what the heck is that in the sky is it a bird it's a plane it's a meteor that not only was seen from the ground across the southeast but also was captured on the goes lightning mapper the tool that normally shows us lightning in the sky was actually showing us the path of this meteor so how cool is that it was captured from above and from below more video to uh, show you now. This as we shift gears and move into, uh, you know, it's actually a great complement to the conversation we were just having about flooding. In 500 year floods don't have to come just every 500 years. And that's what state and international water rescue teams were practicing for this week on Lake James and the Catawba River near Morganton. Boats and aircrafts from North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Connecticut, and even some from Canada, Mexico, Chile, and the United Kingdom took part in this exercise, and this is video you can see that was posted, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, by the Charlotte Fire Department as they're practicing water rescue here, and I think we've got a rescue swimmer dangling from a helicopter, so pretty uh, intense stuff there. The other story that uh, we are reading and wanted to share with you comes ahead of hurricane season. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase a little here from a CNBC report, but AT&T is paying the United States Department of Energy National Laboratory to predict climate-related events that could damage the company's infrastructure over the next 30 years. Uh, the president of operations for AT&T said that their model that they're developing will help guide them on decisions whether to elevate cell sites in the area uh, or to build protection around those cell sites to make sure that they can sustain uh, weather events, major climate events such as higher winds, and rather than just relying on a 10-day weather forecast, they're also going to be using that climate data to find out whether or not they need to strengthen their network, their copper lines, their fiber cable locations, cell sites, and other infrastructure to sustain more weather events. And uh, Scotty, I think we'll be learning a little bit more about that uh, in the coming weeks, as I'm not mistaken, as we look ahead to hurricane season. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I was actually uh, got a phone call from AT&T today. They're going to come on our show uh, towards the end of summer into uh, kind of the peak hurricane season to talk about this. So i uh, pretty excited about that. And one other thing I want to comment on before we get to the roundtable, uh, the Catawba flood exercise, which uh, the uh, video you saw of the Black Hawk helicopter, that actually was taking place here where I live, and it's been pretty unique. Uh, folks have been uh, in the county for about five days. It just wrapped up today, and it never failed. Every day you'd see Black Hawk helicopters flying in the sky and uh, a lot of area uh, uh, waterways and things like that here in the county. So a lot of folks actually live about half a mile from the Catawba River and about a mile from the Johns River. So I had Black Hawks everywhere around my house yesterday afternoon. 
an evening as they were participating in uh, these uh, search and rescue efforts uh, for flooding. And we know here in the Carolinas, both North and South Carolina, we've had our fair share of um, flood events with hurricanes and uh, tropical storms and even just um, floods. So uh, it's uh, an exercise that was uh, that was conducted here. And I, I think it really got a lot of uh, good reviews and hopefully uh, these uh, folks never have to do it, but the way the weather has been trending, I'm sure we'll see more major events uh, that this uh, practice will be uh, useful for. So, James, back to you. 